I was wondering, what do people think about when they think about Easter? I decided to consult Google. I looked at the first 250 images, and about 235 of them were images of either Easter eggs or Easter bunnies. And about 200 of them had both. And I realized Americans are people of real conviction when it comes to Easter. And most of our convictions seem to revolve around bunnies and eggs. But then I thought, what would it be for Christians? What images come to our mind? The Apostles' Creed describes the work of Christ in the following phrase. He was crucified, he died and was buried, and on the third day, he rose again. So the creed offers us three images for the work of Christ, the image of the, of the cross, an image of the tomb, and an image of the empty tomb, really different than the images that we get from Google. So let's take a look at each of those images. First of all, the image of the cross. There's no question that the cross is a vivid depiction of the suffering of Christ and his atoning payment for our sins. Um, Good Friday, part of the Lenten season, focuses on the cross itself. Although actually on Ash Wednesday, we get a foretaste of that when the ashen cross is marked on the foreheads of the faithful. And the cross also reminds us of the incarnation through the brutal depiction of bodily suffering. It's only possible in the context of an incarnate God. So those are images that we see from the cross. The second image is of the tomb, an image of his death and burial. It's a reminder of the fact that the wages of sin really is death. Sin really does lead inexorably to death even for Christ himself. So together, jointly, the cross and the tomb are a picture of the gravity of sin and the absolute desperation we have in terms of finding salvation. In effect, it tells us that our, our sin is too deep and the grave is too dark for us to ever be able to save ourselves. And therefore, we're dependent on an intervention from Christ. And finally, the empty tomb, an image of, of hope, of life, of victory, and proof that even though sin always leads to death, it doesn't have to end in death. Because God in Christ Jesus has conquered sin and death. Therefore, we in Christ are no longer slaves to sin. And for us in Christ, death has lost its sting. In that sense, Easter has simply changed everything. So the meditations that we offer in the following days reflect on these images. And the question that obviously comes in is, to what end? What is the purpose of this divine work for us? Irenaeus, uh, one of the early church fathers, offers kind of a surprising perspective on this, that the end and purpose of the work of Christ is actually that we might become human. He said this just before his martyrdom, I desire him who died for our sake. I desire him who rose for us. Suffer me to receive the pure light, image here of going to heaven. And when I arrive there, I shall become a human being. Suffer me to follow the example of the passion of my God. Now perhaps you're puzzled by the words of Irenaeus. Surely you're already human. But the interesting thing is that Genesis 1 tells us that to be human is to bear the image of God. And in the New Testament, that phrase is almost always used to describe Jesus himself, not just ordinary human beings. In other words, he is the image of the invisible God. Therefore, the interesting thing is that every passage in Scripture that calls on us to be Christ-like or become more Christ-like is really asking us to better bear the image of God. In other words, it's calling us to be just a little bit more human. Intrigued? Well, I hope so. So please join us for a season of meditating on the works of Christ in these images in the hope of helping us to become just a little bit more human.